So those of you who have been subscribed to me long enough and have seen my older videos, even some that I had done in response to the libertarian socialist rants, he moved from the position of supporting the strong government regulation to keep things in check, and as soon as I put him in his place on corporatism, he then switched to being this libertarian socialist. I had done videos in the past on libertarian socialism, I explained why it's a complete oxymoron, which it basically is because communal ownership of property has absolutely nothing at all to do with that of personal ownership of possessions. He basically twists the entire meaning of socialism and tries to create this new version of socialism. The whole meaning of the word socialism even by name, when you talk about socialising things, whether you talk about socialising agriculture, or socialising healthcare, or socialising education, it doesn't matter what you socialise. If you socialise something, you're politically centralising it. He doesn't even understand his own ideology. Anyway, this boy Cameron, otherwise known as Libertarian Socialist Rants, comes up with a number of his arguments in his video on the top 10 arguments of capitalism, and he mentions about the education system, somehow this collectivisation and politically indoctrinating students in this collectivised education system somehow has something to do with capitalism. Well, that goes to show you that he doesn't even understand the difference between capitalism and socialism. Because socialism, again, is about political centralisation, and that state education system where the state gets to collectivise education, that is socialism. Uh, free market in education is where the consumers themselves have the free choice over what they learn, and they go directly to the part of the market in the education system of what they want to learn, in other words, what subject it may be. They're not forced into such a system where the state holds a monopoly over the information that it feeds them. So what he's basically done is he's described the very socialist education system, and he's tried to pass that off as capitalism. Then, of course, he mentions about that of innovation. Well, that's rather quite interesting. What exactly happened as a result of communal ownership of property? They were dying of starvation because they never had the freedom to work for the fruits of their own labour. What was the main reason the landlords had a lack of incentive to look after such property after rent controls? They were running at a loss. When it comes to innovation with a capitalist system, it stems from the freedom of an individual to think for himself. Competition harnesses that. It's that fierce competition in the marketplace that has driven such innovation because of the threat of a competitor overtaking. And that other business, perhaps, could be in the face of, you know, the threat of losing business. What he's basically trying to do is, he's basically trying to say, here's capitalism and instead he's pointing out what is corporatism and he's not directing the argument to the free market. How about he actually make a video and try and refute the free market economy? And yes, it is the free market that harnesses economic development, because the free market economy is not faced with the economic calculation problem. So the very reason why you're seeing such vast waste of resources today, it's not because of capitalism, that's because of the absence of capitalism. Capitalism is not some state-directed economy. And he came up with absolute crap. He, he loves to do this all the time. He just comes up with something, makes it up out of thin air, states it as if it's a fact, and just, you know, goes along with it. For example, he said that, you know, capitalism requires government regulation. Does it really? Is that why the most successful economies the world has ever seen were all of those which were strongly free from government regulation. So what he loves to do, he loves to just make things up out of thin air and just go along with it. Because it would suit his narrative then. Because if he can pass off, you know, capitalism being this corporatist system, then he's got some sort of leverage to defend socialism. Well, the fact of the matter is, he hasn't got any leverage to defend socialism. So he tries to pass off that of a free market economy as what you're living under today, which seriously isn't the case. And it's through 
fierce competition and that of strong consumer choice that prevents the monopolies from forming and he goes on about bad economic business practice. Well, how convenient of him to touch upon that very fact. Why? Because it was through all of his own socialist government interventionism that resulted in all of the bad economic business practice. For example, the banking crisis. All thanks to his socialist government interventionism, what did you end up seeing? Bad banks becoming too big to fail. And yes, the banks in the United States and Great Britain were both overregulated, were being subsidised by the taxpayer. In other words, they became too big to fail. And as a result of all of the socialist government subsidies, what did you see? Well, you saw legally protected fraud. He then goes on about capitalism and how it's only been around for 200 years. The truth of the matter is, capitalism has been around since the days when barter first began. Thousands of years ago. Even when you go back to the ancient Greece, when there was the arguments between you know, Aristotle, etc., and Plato and, and whatnot, and the arguments on individualism and collectivism, then, yes, individualism was in reference to capitalism, and let's not forget the very fact that it was known as meritocracy. And that's what capitalism's all about, a system rewarding on merit. The truly magical part is, however, he then goes on about that of the living standards argument and then touches upon the Soviet Union and Nazi Germany. But hold on a second here, how on earth did either of those economies uh, get passed off as anything successful regarding improvement of living standards? Not only were both economies being propped up and financed by the West, both of these economies may have had high GDPs, but that didn't make them successful in improving the material standards of living of the masses. In fact, rather quite the opposite. You saw high inflation in the likes of Nazi Germany. It was a disastrous failure. When you talk about living standards, we're talking about the material wealth. So in order to improve the material wealth of the masses, you would need to pr produce that meets the demands of the consumer. That's not how socialist economies worked, such as that of the socialist fascist regimes, like Nazi Germany, or the socialist Soviet Union. It was practically centrally planned. The only difference between Nazi Germany and that of the Soviet Union, one collectively owned the means of production through heavy nationalisation, and the other completely controlled the means of production collectively through strong government regulation over the private sector. That was the only difference. And I really don't need to go into too much detail for why there is no alternative to that of the capitalist system, because capitalism is efficient. But you have to love how he shows a picture of nuclear bombs being let off, etc. As if to try and pin this off in capitalism. Capitalism is the only system that works. It's efficient. It's not faced with the economic calculation problem or the knowledge problem, whereas when you talk about socialism, then yes, it's disastrous. You see, there is no alternative to capitalism. You, you've seen fascism, it's been an absolute disaster. You've seen communism, it's been an absolute disaster. No matter where you turn to in any form of collectivism, nowhere in human history has collectivism ever benefited society as a whole. And when even they talk about the tribalism, life before the Industrial Revolution wasn't as rosy as they try to make it out to be. It was, again, horrid. The last thing that I want to touch upon is basically on risks. You could correlate this to the banking crisis. Now, as a result of his socialist government interventionism, they ended up taking the risk away from the creditors via his socialist government subsidies. Because after all, what is a socialist government subsidy doing? A socialist government subsidy is guaranteeing free money in their pockets. So they, they no longer have a risk to concern themselves over. Creditors are faced with two things. Return and risk. They want to ensure that what their investment's going to be is going to make a return. But they also have to face up to the reality that they've got a risk involved. But if the government subsidises and takes the risk away, it leads to legally protected fraud. Because there's no risk involved. Because the, the taxpayer 
is forced to continuously bail their losses out. So they basically get to live for free off of all of their own, their own losses. What's that got to do with a capitalist system? That's got nothing to do with socialist bailouts. Yes, a capitalist system is all about risks, and rightly so. That's what ensures efficiency. And this comes from the same type of person who basically manipulates the entire meaning of socialism, bends it to suit his own wee agenda that he's made up in there, made up out of thin air, that completely defies the entire meaning of socialism. Anyway folk, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and of course share the video and whatnot. And of course I shall talk to you later. Cheers.